Hello and welcome to today's video. This time I'm at the London Bloomsbury Book Fair and Photography Fair. Cannot wait to show you what we've got here today. So sit back, relax, and let's get to it. Okay then, so as is traditional, we start with the queue waiting to go in. And uh, this Bloomsbury Book Fair is in the Holiday Inn in Coram Street in London, a really nice part of London close to uh, Russell Square Tube Station. So quite easy access to get to uh, to get to the fair. And this is uh, just the queue back through reception. And uh, the doors opened at 9.30. There's my friend David there. And uh, this is a little list of the exhibitors. So this one was a little bit different. So you've got the Bloomsbury Book Dealers, a traditional antiquarian and first edition book dealers. And uh, you've also got some photography dealers as well and uh, this is a little table showing what was coming up um, I will be be here next month we got the uh, the paperback and pulp show along with the ephemera fair and um, I will flash up the uh, details of the fairs for next year uh, towards the end of this video but good chance to pick up all your flyers there and just inside the door before you've even paid yet is tables and tables of absolute bargain books at just three pounds a pop so naturally this was swarming and uh, later in the day it actually goes even cheaper than that the books get reduced to just a pound each um, so there was many people there filling their boots and uh, yeah absolutely fantastic I ended up buying um, a couple of books from the uh, from that section and uh, absolutely amazing really really great to sort of rifle through that as i said from about 11 11 30 so i think it, the books went down to a pound each and uh, these were the tables opposite still just before you actually get into the main sort of book book fair properly and um the tables did vary so there's some people with just like strictly just books other people with prints and with vintage maps as well which uh, is very very interesting and uh, not the sort of thing I know a lot about is old maps, but uh, they certainly had their fans. And uh, we'll have a really good look through both fairs. Um, I've actually got a few talking heads this time. So uh, Richard Mira, who is a uh, fine photo photograph dealer, um, he was uh, in the photograph fair and he was able to sort of explain a little bit about the nature of um, collectible photographs and uh, that was really really good so Rich is going to show us around the dealers room for the uh, photography dealers um, we've got a chat with George Jeffrey um, he's uh, one of the co-organizers of the book for a long time book dealer and um, so have a chat with him and also with Jeremy Carson of the Antiquarian Book Company he's a regular at these events Certainly there was quite the variety of stuff from very low price items to items in their thousand and uh, big sets of books and rare first editions, you know, just loads and loads of it. Um, I kept going back to the, the, the three pound stall because there was so much there and I, every time I looked I saw something else. It was uh, difficult to uh, keep a track of it all but there was certainly some great stuff there. And I think the name of the game is to get rid of it all by the end of the day. And certainly they made a huge dent in it by the time I'd left. All manner of subjects. It wasn't just one sort of thing, um, a real mixture of things, but some huge books, all the same price and series of books and volumes and volumes. I mean, honestly, fantastic. Loads and loads of stuff there. There's a couple of uh, nice 60s four square there, but I thought I'll wait until they go down a little bit cheaper in price. Of course, they're gone later on. <laughs> and a couple of nice Tash and books as well. But, you know, I was conscious I'd only sort of just got in. I didn't want to be carrying loads of big heavy books around. I did end up getting that one, though, which is Puffin Storybook number 100. I got that one for a pound. I was very pleased with that because it's a beautiful copy as well. And we will have a little look at my... Uh, pickups at the end of this video as is traditional we'll just give a few minutes to see what i actually managed to uh to pick up but this is just a, a bit more of the uh the, the cheap store the three pound a book store see if you can see anything that you would have picked up for that sort of money a 
And so there was all manner of stuff. This is fairly early on. The fair hasn't actually opened properly yet, um, but I was able to get in a little bit early just while some of the dealers were setting up um, to, to be able to film. Um, and that was really, really handy because once the doors opened, well, you saw the queue there, it, it really was quite packed. Nice fine binding books. Vintage prints and plates. Sort of thing people would get framed up. Certainly if you were furnishing a house, you could come up with some fantastic and unique prints by uh, attending this show. But I think one of the main takeaways for me from this is just the sheer variety of what was on offer. You know, it could be an overused phrase. There was something for everyone, but there really, really was. And uh, as we'll see, there's rare first editions. There was all the photography stuff. There was collectible paperbacks. I came across a box of vintage penguins, real early ones as well, crime ones. It really was quite the variety. And I managed to pick up um, a few bits and pieces that I'd specifically been looking for. Um, so I was really, really pleased with that. And uh, as I said, I'll show you the, the few bits I got at the end of the uh, at the end of the video. One thing I really must say is how fascinating I found the photography part of it and the photographs. That was something I did not know a lot about. And um, Richard, who guides us around the photography fair in a minute, um, was so knowledgeable and was able to put things into a very clear perspective for me as a complete beginner, not knowing a lot about it. And um, I'm sure that you will enjoy learning a bit more about the world of collectible photographs as well, because it really is fascinating. So here we are, about to go in. And this is the photography room. I'm Richard Mira. Yeah. Uh, I can both collect and deal in vintage photographs. Brilliant, yeah. Um, from mainly the 19th century, but also 20th century. Yeah. And one of the, and I've been collecting for 30, 40 years. Right, okay. Um, one of the attractions I found is the variety that you can collect. It's not within just, the world of photographs. Yeah. Yes, that you can start from something as cost a few pounds, five pounds. Yeah, you can go up to something that costs five thousand. Right, and there's see. everything in between. So, what makes a photograph collectible? Is it like the subject matter, or who took it's, it? Or it's, uh, it's collectible if you want to collect it. I suppose. Yeah, uh, yeah. but. You really, you've got to look for whether it's a, in good condition, whether it's a rare image, yeah. whether it's by a known photographer, I see, yeah. uh, and whether it's of a particular subject or part of the world. I see, right. Uh, I, in my head, I sort of likened collectible photographs to like a bit like collectible postcards, so certain genres like... I don't know, unpublished, maybe pictures of the Beatles, for example, or World War One regiment, something like that. Would that be right? It's, it's the same kind of range of interests yeah. from yeah. Um, high-end subject matter, what you might call fine art photographs mm. yeah. of landscape or portraiture by people who are extremely famous from the 19th century, like Roger Fenton or Julia Margaret Cameron, um, and they're very expensive. Right, yeah. Right down to a carte de visite, as it, uh, which is of a visiting card size image. Yeah. That's a carte de visite of the Tsar of Russia. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Very interesting. So, um, what sort of value would be on something like that? Well, this would probably be around eighty to a hundred, okay. eighty to one twenty pounds. Yeah. Okay. They tend to be they're rare images. They're highly collectible. Yeah. Um, or you might have 
a, a These are two Cambridge yeah, yeah. oarsmen. Oh, I see, the, right. The Cambridge rowing eight. Now that um, appears to be like, it's got little highlights yeah, tinted, is it? Tinted with yeah. light blue as appropriate for Cambridge. Yeah. Um, that's, that's going to be more like 40, 40 pounds. Right, right. Fantastic. And if you're interested in cats, for example, mm. two rather nice cart to visit. Victorians with their cats. Wow, right. Not often photographed no. because they were difficult to get to stand still. Of course, unlike yeah. dogs yeah. who were more biddable. Good point, yeah. Um, and they would just be 10, 20 pounds. Right, right. okay. But you can find ordinary cart of just yeah. ordinary portraits yeah. uh, that cost as little as three or four or five pounds. Right. And just you know, whatever takes your fancy. Yes. Yeah, I see. Then you can move on yeah. to. Travel. A lot of people collect travel photography. Yeah. Um, Hong Kong. Oh, yeah. Holy Land. Mm -hmm. Taken in the early part of the 20th century. Yeah. Um, no, it's, um, Another one of Hong Kong, Canton, so China, highly collectible. Yeah. Uh, is, uh, very nice lady from Bhutia, lady right. from Nepal right. in India, yeah. about 1880. Right, and what would that set you back if you wanted to buy that? That's still. 100, 150 100, pounds. Yeah. And I'm assuming and again, none of these are like. Again, it depends on condition. All right, okay. This yeah. is for its time, extremely uh, nice condition, just yeah. a little bit of. They tended to fade at the edges. Oh, yeah, I see. Would that there have been in a frame at some point, maybe? No, no, it would Not have been in, in a, a photograph album. They, oh, right, okay. They collected these as they went on their travels I see, and yeah. put them into albums. Right, okay. Alternatively, let's go to the. The 20th century. Um, here's a rather splendid image of two acrobats. Right, I see, yeah. About 1930. Yeah. Okay. Uh, or if you're interested in people will make subject matter to do with, say, fishing. Here's a gentleman with a very large fish. Oh, uh, yeah, it's a great shot. This is a, yeah. from California. Again, about 1940. And that's been put in the mat, so what yes. would that sort of cost, Richard? Uh, what have I got on it? This is 50. Let me tell you what I've got on it. It's 50 pounds. 50 pounds, yeah, okay. But we're assuming that something like that is unique. It's never been reprinted anywhere that it you would is, know. It is, well, the nature of photography is that it's reproducible. Yeah. But it is highly unlikely that someone's find done that, yeah. Uh, another one. Understood. Oh, brilliant. Now, we're here today, I mean, I do, I'm familiar with the room because this is where they have the paperback show, yes. which is what I usually do. Right. Um, and this, what we're looking at now is all uh, photograph dealers, isn't it? A room full of dealers in vintage photography. Yeah. So you, you can just collect what your, uh, what your interests are. Yeah. These are military ones, I see, by the look of it. Some of these. Oh, this is going to the firing squad. Yeah. Uh, Mussolini's execution. The execution wow. of Mussolini. Wow, incredible. Uh, and if we now, this gentleman is very yeah. Uh, tends to sell his speciality is cart these cart de visite. Ah, oh, yeah. There we are, yeah. Uh, and he's he's written a book. Cart de visite. Wow. Okay. Featuring the, the huge explosion of interest when the cart de visite was invented. Right. In the early 1860s. Uh, and everybody started to collect cards right. and put them in albums. Interesting. Um, there was a really massive explosion which oh, became really known as yeah. Cartomania. And he's got some there for sale, of course. Yep. Uh, what else have we got? Mm -hmm. Jenny, this lady has. This is a very rare image yeah. of the, the Raj in India, Indian, wow. the Indian art of Indian army. Yeah. Oh, wow. £500. Pounds 500 right. 
because of its a condition and its yeah. rarity. Beautiful. And India is a strong area of strong collecting subject. at the yeah. moment. Okay, that makes sense. It's a bit more uh, sort of general. A whole range of, of uh, small, large stereo stereo cards. Again, a big uh, area yes. of collecting. Yeah. Um, so these will go into a specific device these will go to give into a three D image. image, a three uh, oh, a is that stereo. Right? Is that stereo. one up there? Yes. Yeah, yeah. A stereo I see. viewer yeah. like that. I see. You would look at it, and it would look. It would be in three D. Make it make it into one. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. And again, that was pre-television in the Victorian era. Yeah. That's what people entertained themselves with in the oh, evenings. Yes. Paul's got Again, the same sort of same range thing, of material. Yeah. And he's got some 20th century images. Yeah. Military interest. Right, so this photograph I see is signed here. Oh no, that just says Hong Kong. No. Well, I thought it was a signature, but that shows where it's from anyway. Yeah. Let's see what it's unlike contemporary photography where everybody will yes, the photographer will sign the image yeah quite often 19th century images do not have a signature right so um, how, how is it told then if it comes well from a sometimes they, they would they would write their name in the negative so I it would be printed on the print ah, right right i can't immediately see an example um so you would know how yeah. otherwise you know from their style and, and content who it is. Who it might you, be, yeah. From that experience, yeah. you can judge That's who it, it might yeah. be. Understood. Now, this gentleman He's a... is selling a lot of albums. Yeah. Wow. And as you can see, covering huge areas. Again, a strong China. collecting area. Yeah. China. Okay, very interesting. And you just come to a fair like this, and you go through these album, these boxes bit by bit yeah and see see if something grabs you if you're looking for a particular area which a lot of people are yeah photographs of the moon that's a, a again a very particular niche area yeah. but is can be highly collectible images of borneo and a whole series of india called the peoples of india yeah A rare series. Again, you've fantastic. You've got to know what kind of condition to expect them in. Some, yeah, a lot of these were often not very well uh, developed and printed, see, right. so they yeah. tended to fade a bit. So you've got to accept if you're looking for that sort of thing, you won't find them necessarily in, in, uh, in top in quality now. condition. Okay. Have a quick look over here. In fashion, 60s stuff. Stereo cards again. One area we haven't covered is our mm. cased images. Yeah. I don't know whether Malcolm have you. Yes, here we are. This was one of the earliest forms of photography mm. called the daguerreotype. Right, okay. Which was a unique portrait hmm. or in a unique photograph uh, on a silvered copper plate. Right, right. It was invented by a Frenchman, Mr. Daguerre, Louis Jacques Mande Daguerre. So it almost looks 3D, or there's some depth to it. Yes. Yes, that's the colouring. Very interesting, yeah. Again, a, a hugely popular subject. Yeah. Uh, it was the first kind of ability to create a photograph. Um, that was that was invented right i see but it was a dead end it, it, it yeah you couldn't do anything other than create oh, one I image yeah i see it yeah. was uh, an englishman henry william henry fox talbot mm. who invented the the net positive negative process right whereby okay. you can take a negative yeah. and then make endless Copies from it, yeah. Copies from yeah, it, well. which is the focus, uh, the, the, the foundation of all modern photography. A shop vendor in Tunis. Tunis, right, ah, yeah. North Africa. But again, 1880s. Yeah. Very 
nice image. Wow, yeah. Cables. Oh, there's a... 3D cameras. Some people look for the sort of industrial photography, yeah. highly technical mm. photographs. Beautifully done. They would have been taken on a... Really a, nice camera. A huge camera yeah. with a negative that size. Right. So they're fine quality. Yeah. And people like that sort of thing. Yeah. Need some more 3D cards. More yeah. Stereo cards here. Stereo, Oops. yeah. Of course, when I was young, they still had the Viewmasters, which is a similar process, yes, I think, isn't yes. it? Yes, yes. These are the originals. Yeah. I can definitely see the attraction of them. And it has, like, as you were talking about postcards mm. earlier, it has the attraction of being easily storable. Yeah, oh yeah, absolutely. You, know, you can yeah, collect yeah. a lot in a small space. Yeah, <laughs> definitely. Now, this gentleman sounds very high quality, early hand-coloured Japanese images. Wow. This yeah. was by a photographer called Felice Beato, yeah. photographing in the 1860s and 70s. Wow. Lovely. Beautiful. Rare, very rare. Yeah. So you, you learn what's relatively common, what mm. crops up in albums things, and what is very uncommon. Genuinely scarce, yeah. Well, Richard, it's okay. absolutely fascinating. I mean, thank you for touring us right. around the room. Thank this God. is exactly what our viewers wanted. I right. mean, really, so <laughs> thank, you very, thank you very much. Thank you very much. My name is George Jeffrey. I'm a bookseller. I've been a bookseller on and off all of my life. Uh, I've had a few periods where um, I was doing other things, but generally I've been a bookseller and I've been a full-time bookseller now for about 35 years. Right, yeah, a fair bit of your life then. Yeah. yeah. Um, and what's your connection with this London show then? Bloomsbury show? Um, basically, oh, probably 30 years ago, uh, we were asked to take over the Ephemera Fair. Yeah. Um, because it wasn't particularly working that well and um, in the last 30 years it's just evolved and it's become bigger and bigger yeah uh, it's it's just a, a good fair yeah absolutely so I um, mean I I remember going to the fairs in the Bedford was it the yeah Bedford uh, years, yeah, that in was the 90s. years ago yeah, yeah. Um, and most recently I've been up for the paperback shows, yeah. which have had the ephemera bit. This is a bit different, this is antiquarian for traditions, but also some paperbacks, I'm yeah. pleased to see. It's a really good mix, this show. I mean, I've, in fact, I couldn't believe how much there was to film. There was, you could say there was something for everybody at this one, including lots of bargains just on the way in, that three pound store. The three pound store, exactly. Fantastic. Um, yes, I think, as a general rule, it's probably the best place, if you ever want to become a bookseller, I'd say it's the best place to learn how to become a bookseller. Yeah. Um, and there's a variety of stuff. There's lots of experts in different fields like paperbacks. I'm not a particular expert in anything. I'm just yeah. a general dealer. Uh, but there's obviously people that deal in specific subjects. Yeah. And they're experts. Brilliant, yeah. And it's um, it seems quite brisk today, wasn't it? You know? Yes. Decent, yeah. decent crowd waiting to get in. Um, I mean, we're filming this one in October. Um, so, yeah, it's the build-up to Christmas, I suppose. Um, now, the photography fair, that's twice a year, is it? Yes. Attached to this one, yeah. yeah. And this one is pretty much monthly? Yeah, this is monthly. Yeah, yeah. brilliant, brilliant. Um, and do you have different dealers, or is it a, a mixture of people coming in? Yeah, now? no, it's a mixture of dealers that uh, have got, some have got shops, some work from home. Um, yeah, it's a general mix of the second-hand antiquarian book trade. Yeah. We've got, obviously, um, you know, Bernard Shapiro, who's a, a top, obviously, a top London dealer. We've got you know, through um, Robert through has got a shop uh, opposite the uh, Victoria and Albert Museum. Yeah. So we've got people that are well established in the trade, yeah. have been in the trade for 50, 60 years, yeah. know exactly what they're doing, and they exhibit at fairs. Uh, so they obviously find it um, beneficial 
Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's just a general mixture of second-hand antiquarian book dealers. Brilliant. Yeah. Now there's been so much here to look at, and um, everyone's really friendly as well. And I know yeah. it's at the paperback show. It's a really good atmosphere. Yeah. People, you know, you get to see the same people again and again, don't you? Collectors and dealers, and um, it's it's a good atmosphere. This show. I really yeah. Like I think my wife, the attitude she's got is as long as you. Uh, behave yourself and you're polite to people I think you know this is a kind of a quite easy fair some fairs are, are very strict on what they will allow and what yeah. they won't allow yeah. but here that's why I think we've got the variety oh, that, because great. we're we're kind of quite accommodating yeah yeah. So yeah, so I think and a it's, lot of it's not expensive. It's three pound to get in. It's, it's yeah. literally nothing. No, is exactly. It? Less than the cost of a cup of coffee. And realistically, yeah. one of so the biggest problems with the fares have been obviously the rents for renting yeah. the rooms have gone up so much yeah. that that three pounds on the door is quite important because there are literally times when you're not making any money and that makes the difference between being able to pay the bills or not. Right. Understood. Yeah. yeah. So you know, fares are kind of difficult to run. Um, but as I say, we try to keep it nice, easy for people. We don't, you know, when you go to a fair, in my opinion, the whole idea is to try to make it easier for the exhibitor. And yeah. then that follows on that the customer's happy. Absolutely. So. Yeah. Well, having uh, helped out Dorset Bob Light at the paperback show, really easy access. You park it right yeah. next to the side. Yeah. You're in, in in like two minutes, aren't yeah. you? And um, plenty of room to set up. And I prefer the hotel environment. It, it's it's rather than like a hall or something. Yeah. It, you know, you've got oh, carpeted God, yeah. floor. Yeah. It just yeah. makes you know a yeah. more uh, enjoyable experience buying your books. What you what you get as well is different from a hall, say, is that you'll get the customer because they can have... Yes, sir. Uh, can I serve uh, you in oh, a no, minute? Oh, no, you carry on, George. It's fine, yeah? honestly. Yeah, 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 carry on. Right, go on then. Yeah. 45. 45. What, you want to give me 45? It's a good deal. It's a good deal, yeah, 45, yeah. I'll come back for you. All right, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're getting back to... <laughs> yeah, getting back to... Um, hotel mm. obviously you'll get customers hanging around longer yeah so that you know they can go and have lunch they can have a drink whereas in a hall you're a bit kind of out of the way yeah whereas yeah. in a hotel as i say they might that's great yeah they you might can come back the bar, you can yeah, go get some exactly. lunch and come back in again yeah. and um, that's you know that's an obvious we we have run a fair once in in a kind of hall and it didn't really work not the same atmosphere is yeah. It? yeah no it's really interesting no. well i mean i'm been really really pleased with this fantastic selection of stuff uh, as i said at the start something for everybody here i mean there really really is so uh, but you've got to remember yeah. here like you know we've got paul syston the binder yeah um yeah. you've got like a lot of a lot of people with tremendous experience mm. you know they've been book dealers yeah. or associated with the book trade all their life yeah and uh, you know they're really knowledgeable really friendly yeah what more could you want yeah exactly Brilliant. Oh, well, thank you very much, George. No Brilliant. problem. Thank you. That's thank great. you. I'm Jeremy Carson. I'm the Antiquarian Book Company, and I'm here in the Bloomsbury uh, Holiday Inn for the Etc. Book Fair. Thank you. Now, how long have you um, been coming to this one then for? Then? About 10 years now. 10 years, yeah. And do you have any particular specialties? No. Just I'm a general dealer. I uh, buy books in people's houses, right. um, and I bring them to fairs like this. Yeah. I don't sell on the internet. I don't have a bookshop. I don't go to any auctions. I only, I only sell at fairs. You just sell direct to the, the end the end customer. Yeah. yeah. And you travel all around the country then? Yeah, I, I'm yeah. in the PBFA as well. So I'm going to be in uh, Oxford next week. I'm going to be in Brighton the week after that. I run the Brighton Fair, in fact. I'm going to be uh, here again many times before Christmas. Yeah. I do 30 fairs a year. Right. Right. Oh, fantastic. And you don't specialise in anything particular? No, because I don't know what I'm going to buy next in the I people's see. houses of the collection. Yeah. It, the, I've recently bought a huge collection of modern firsts. Uh, six months before that, I bought a big collection of travel. Right. I bought a big antiquarian collection. So I, I just buy. So that sort of dictates how what you sell. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Understood. So we were talking earlier about you're saying about the, the current sort of state of the second-hand book market, yes. and um, we need, you know, like you say, when people come in, they're a bit bewildered by the pricing and things like that. Yeah. The point really is that book collecting isn't as popular as it used to be. Right. In the uh, going back as far as the 
last decades of the last century, yeah. 1980s and 90s, book collecting was very popular. There were uh, plenty of magazines about it and fairs like this were besieged. Yeah. Since then, collecting has gone to the internet. The old collectors are dying and their massive collections of books are coming onto the market mm. and there are fewer customers for them. There's never been a better time to buy old books. Uh, They're a lot cheaper advice. than they used to be. Yeah. There are massive bargains everywhere. You'll see today here on the shelves yeah. all the books that people are taking home at the end of the fair, five pounds each on them, three pounds each yeah. on them. That would not have happened 20 or 30 years ago. Right. I believe it will happen again that people will collect books again. Mm. It just needs a bit of impetus. Yeah. Certainly when we get younger people in here, newcomers in here for the first time, they are absolutely amazed at how cheap things are. Yeah. A frequent question is, is it real? Because they're just used to handling reproductions in antique centres. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They don't know that you can get the real thing yeah. for less than you can get it in Often, the antique yeah, centre. Yeah. And it's worth a lot more. Yeah. And we can't give them away because, as I say, massive glut on the market, excess of supply. Yeah tiny amount of demand right it's very interesting isn't it yeah so how do we change that then by getting a television program about book collecting oh there we go you see so but can i say mm. real book collecting this sort of book collecting anytime you do see a book on television it's the book of kells and they're stroking it with white gloves yeah. it puts people off a sort of antique or something like Har that. yeah harry potter book or something like that yeah it makes the news just because it's worth twenty thousand pounds that's not what book collecting is about no no they need to do more like people completing sets of penguins, for example, that would yes. be uh, that would make great TV. Putting think. things in rows, very good. Yeah, yeah, absolutely numerical. Yeah, no, I'm totally in agreement with you. The only thing I could think of, it wasn't really on collecting. It was Griff Rhys Jones' book one, and it was maybe 30 years ago now. And I remember him, I remember him doing a feature on I think uh, Nigeo Marsh, and he, right. he visited a collector who had all were early books yes. and things like that. I remember that had like a, a collecting bit in it. Yes. But it was still mainly new books as well. But it isn't really about this. It's not about people coming around, really turning over lots of stones and seeing what they can find. Yeah. You know, looking through the shelves and hunting for those things like a little book with an inscription in it that the mm. dealer's missed, which is worth £100 instead right. of one. Right. Now, yeah. literally things like that. I see. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Well, I mean, all we can do is um, publicise the shows as much yes, as possible. Well done. I've Thank certainly really enjoyed this one. It's been a real eye opener. The, 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 just the variety of stuff um, and I you could say there's something for everybody I mean definitely so uh, yeah well thank you very much pleasure cheerio what is this then because this looks incredible it's uh, an archive of photographs that was taken by a man called Philip Townsend in yeah. the 60s and his main claim to fame is that the Rolling day. Stones yeah. that is May the 4th 1963 and it is the first ever official photo shoot of the Rolling Stones. Wow. And his brief was to make them the anti-Beatles. Yeah. He took them out of their suits, told them to wear their normal clothes, and walked around London with them for the day. Wow. And uh, a few years later, he was taking the famous photographs of the Beatles there with the Maharishi. Yeah. Amazing. And these are all his. These are uh, artist proofs. All right. And, um, number one of 50s see, I see yeah. so these are the ones that he kept for himself wow and this is quite a large collection so i'm selling it for quite a large amount of money yeah i saw that two, it was 2900 but wow. well everything has 20 percent off okay so that's uh two three two four something like that yeah it's a trade convention to uh have 20 percent off so uh, okay. if you are listening at home, you might want to ask for that the next time you're at a book fair. You never know. It might be very pleasant. I'll be able to get you 20%. Yeah. Oh, brilliant. Now, that's, uh, that's really nice. Thank you, Jeremy. So here we are, back in the main book room now, and uh, hope you've been enjoying some of the sights that you've seen whilst we've been uh, listening to those uh, fine, fine dealers and experts. And... Uh, certainly was plenty in here and it was uh, great to bump into a few people who watched the channel as well I have some people from the paperback show um so a couple of dealers that i knew as well which was great and uh the way that the tables were generally laid out it was a table with like a bookcase at the back of the table so they could get uh you know stock out that way and that seemed to work really well for uh, for most dealers you could get a lot out on a table then This was uh, one of the stalls selling paperbacks. And I think, I think I've seen this particular dealer at the last paperback show, but the stock wasn't as familiar as what I could remember. But as you can see, five pounds per book. And I'm sure you can see there's some nice stuff in here. These are collectible paperbacks.
Um, and a five pound was, was absolutely fine for this sort of age of book. And as you can see on the whole, the quality was there as well. They weren't like all tatty books. These were collectible paperbacks. So nice to, uh, nice to see so many. And so there was a few stores which had paperbacks, which was really good because I wasn't really sure if there was going to be any there. And, um, I was delighted to find some, which was great. Obviously, next month, November 24th, is the uh, the date of the next London paperback show, and that will be absolutely fantastic. If you've not seen the video for the one from earlier in the year, I mean, that was an outstanding show. I'm sure the next one will be equally as good. Uh, Dorset Bob's got some great stock. In fact, all the dealers are going to be really ramping up for it. So expect big things. And if you didn't make it last time, I'm sure you'll be kicking yourself. So uh, if you can get down, I highly, highly recommend it. It's going to be another fantastic show. Some great stuff here. Really lots of stuff that's worth a fiver. I mean, there really is. And I'm sure they would have given discount if you'd bought a few, you know. I certainly saw people buying armloads of this stuff, so it is, uh, it was selling. Yeah, plenty there. She's a Lily Put magazine, so old army army laughs mag as well. Yeah, fair batch of pans. Yeah, there was pans and penguins at this show. It was really good. That's a real nice one, but I realised I did actually own that one, but I also would have had it. Fantastic Al Capone book. Yeah, nice to see. That store was busy all day from what I could see. Piles of penguins on the floor there. The store has some really interesting stuff as well. Some nice paperbacks there. Yeah, some good sort of underground titles and authors first editions as well yeah, a few odd annuals didn't see many annuals but i saw some uh, nice run of cormac mccarthy you don't often see little collections of those around let's get some nice stuff here little services editions Yeah, there's a few sort of underground mags in that at the show as well. I wasn't expecting to see so many, but there was all the main ones were there. I think that like it and Oz and Private Eye and things like that. There's an early Private Eye there, the sixties ones, in a big pack. And they're on Truman Caputi. Some good stuff. Greater Trumps, well, we'll say no more. This is an excellent store. I revisit this one a few times. That was the first to catch 22. It was an ex library, so I think you had about 85 on it, which I thought was still very reasonable if you were uh, looking for that one. Copies of time. I mean, people were buying in. All the stalls were busy. They actually, yeah, I think the dealers have had a great day. Um, certainly, I saw plenty of people buying plenty of books, which is fantastic. I didn't really think any stall was ridiculously overpriced for what they had. I think they're in the market. They, you know, A lot of these dealers are a long time. They're not exhibitors. They are dealers. They're there to sell, not to show their stock off. And I think that showed a bit. Some great stuff on there. A few authors I collect there. Yeah, 
Yeah, paintings of Michelangelo, signed by the old Vic Company of 1951. So I guess there might have been a few famous signatures in that. Um, I was hoping to find a few tube maps. Um, I didn't, in the end, get any. Um, that was the, They were more bus maps rather than tube. Um, but I had my eyes peeled. It was a nice little run of um, George MacDonald Fraser flash books, Flashman. Uh, but all, all ones, sadly, I've got. I'm actually after the later ones rather than the earlier ones now. Else I uh, would have uh, been in there. This is interesting. I spotted it from a mile off, Olympia Press. It's a great imprint. Um, and this is probably the most keyest title in a dust wrapper. But yeah, a couple of hundred pounds for Burroughs' Naked Lunch. So uh, it's probably what it's worth, in all honesty. It's the first physical copy I've ever seen. That was really nice, that Silly Symphonies annual. I wish I'd um, taken a look at the the uh, price on that one because it's great. Really, really nice. And there really was just so much to look at. A great photo, that. <laughs> there was stuff everywhere. Now... This was the little box of um, vintage penguins. They're all first editions. Um, the prices varied. Obviously, the uh, the green crime ones were the expensive ones. But these other ones weren't too bad, considering they were in pretty nice condition. And on the whole, a lot of them, if they were issued in wrappers, they had their wrappers in a lot of cases. Um, this one on top, I had to look twice, because to me, it looked like that was priced at a tenner. And I know it's one that I need to get a better copy of. And that one, although not in with a perfect dust wrapper, it has got a wrapper with it. Um, so I thought, well, I've got to, since I'm here, I've got to go through these. And I did randomly check a few of them price-wise. And um, they were ranging, I guess, from about 20 to £50. Pounds. Um, I checked Hand of the Baskers. I'm sure this one was 50 Yeah, £50. Pounds. They were all firsts. Every single one I checked was a first, um, but there was no, none of the rare wartime ones, which are the, you know, the really big money nowadays. Um, but yeah, sadly, uh, a little bit too much money for improvers, you know, just to get better copies than the ones I've already got. So in the end, I didn't bother buying any, um, any penguins there and I didn't pick any up to resell to other collectors. But uh, interesting to see them all the same. He was the only store with some really nice vintage penguin. There was a fair bit from the 50s and 60s, as we've seen already, dotted around. But he was the only one with some really early stuff, evidently a collection that's been bought. Um, and lovely to see. But yeah, I double checked. I thought, is that a tenner? Is it, does it look like a tenner to you? It was 40 quid. So I left that one behind in the end. But there's a few there, like number 84. That was only one I upgraded recently. Lolo Willows, scarce in uh, in first edition. I do wish I'd gone through the uh, the travel ones a bit closer now, because there's a couple of those, actually, that are still on my wants list to upgrade. But next time, <laughs> next time, this is a, the same stall that had the penguins, and he had an excellent uh, stall overall. In fact, I'd say he was my favourite, although I didn't end up buying anything. I think he had the best stall at the entire show. Um, you yeah, know, best quality stock, really interesting books as well. Um, yeah, I thought there's some good stuff there. A little puffin rhymes there. I zoom in on that one. That's uh, a baby puffin, so uh, very, very scarce those. Um, he had a hundred on that one, but it was in you know pretty nice shape. But uh, although it's one I need, it was a little bit rich for my pocket on the day. But still nice to see. And I think if I lived in London, I'd probably be going to this show every single month without fail because there's so much to see. And uh, they have this book fair with the photography fair twice a year a similar sort of uh set up to like the paperback show with the ephemera show uh going hand in hand so to get more information and to plan your visits do visit the uh etc fairs website that's the best place uh to go and you can just sign up to their email mailing list which is what i've done so it keeps you abreast of everything but as i said i will pop up the fairs 
the future fairs on the screen. Um, but certainly the next one for me is Sunday, November the 24th for the uh, the paperback and pulp fair alongside the ephemera fair, where you'll see a lot of this sort of similar stuff as well. Uh, and it's, you know, that's it, absolutely fantastic. The last one was truly outstanding. There we are. That store was so good I had to take a photo. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was a busy old fair at, at times that the room was packed. And, and, you know, you had to sort of pick your moment, really, to uh, to be able to get to the stalls. Um, but I did my best. Thankfully, as I said, I got in early to, to make the most of uh, filming before uh, before it got too busy. And I just about captured most of it. A sort of more modern prints. That they were sort of reproduction vintage adverts. I think some of them were original adverts that had been taken from magazines and mounted up. It's a great stall again, but coming in for a, a closer look again. Yep, some good stuff that not expensive. Very, very reasonable. Absolutely fantastic. The stuff on display. I mean, really, you know, there was so much there. And there we are. The uh, the room in full swing, you could say. Deals being had every which way. It was absolutely fantastic. OK, so this is Richard's catalogue. So Richard showed us around the photography fair and um, yeah, absolutely beautiful. I won't go through the entire thing, but it's a absolutely beautiful catalogue of what his uh, current stock is. And uh, well, we'll look at those in a moment. These are some of those uh, cards. See the selection of them, quite interesting, aren't they? It's the Cambridge Oarsman. So you remember uh, Roger actually showed us that one, a carte de vista. The two oarsmen from Cambridge, so £40 on that one. Give you a little idea of what these things fetch, certain ones. They do vary, they, they, they start at just a couple of pounds, these cards, and uh, go up in, in value accordingly. Um, Richard doesn't actually uh, have a website per se. He does attend the, the shows, though. Um, and uh, there is an email address for him, which is uh, mayera at btconnect.com. I shall pop that one up on the screen now. So if you've seen something in there that you do fancy, uh, uh, drop Richard a line. Um, while I'm here, I did pick up some of the flyers. So as I said, my next show is going to be this one, Sunday the 24th of November. This is my next book fair. And this is the paperback and pulp and ephemera fair. So at the same location. Now, these are the, the last of a Bloomsbury book fair. Um, we've got one on November the 10th and we've got one on December the 8th. And then the dates for next year are now confirmed. And uh, you'll see there is one every single month. OK, so uh, if you like what you've seen today and boy, oh boy, there's a lot to see, um, then uh, that's your dates for your diary. Now, let's have a look at what I actually managed to pick up myself. So as you saw in the video, I, uh, I picked up a copy of a Puffin Storybook 100. Really, really nice copy of this one. I shall compare it against the one in my collection already. But that was a really, really nice. That one, that was the first printing. It may have been the only printing of this, actually. I don't know if it ever got reprinted. Uh, 1956, a very early B format as well. You don't see many uh, Penguin books from that period in the B format. Um, I picked up this one, which is... Uh, I do collect odd bits and pieces around the Festival of Britain, and this was the exhibition of books, which you hear referred to a lot in things like the Penguin story. And uh, Penguin themselves um, had a fair few books in the exhibition. So I was really, really pleased to get this. It's sadly not illustrated, but it is like a, a full sort of history of all the books that get sort of nominated in that. I mean, it was only £3, so I thought 
that really is a great price for that one. So didn't want to turn that one away. And then I did pick up one um, first edition. Look at this one. It's a travel book. Um, a look at Yugoslavia, of all places, by science fiction author Brian Aldiss. Cities and Stones. Very, very unusual indeed, this one. And uh, 350 but it actually was in the, the one pound stall at the end of the day. I picked this one up. So, uh, well, I don't mind Brian Aldiss at all. Um, I didn't even know he'd written this one. It's by, it's, it's a hardback first edition. It's by his hardback publisher, which is Faber and Faber. There we are. So, you know, it's about his 10th book by the looks of it. I'm trying to find the uh, the title page with the print in history. Oh, there we are. Yeah, Faber and Faber, 1966. There we are. So that was really good. Now, one of the, as I mentioned that I'd gone up specifically to look for something in mind, and that was these. So these are the uh, the Penrose Annual. Now I've got these amazingly started all the way back in like 1897, I believe, or 1896, and they went till 1982, stopping. They were published annually, but they stopped obviously for the first and second world wars. They were paused. Now I've got some from like the 1910s and the 1920s. Um, I haven't got any from the 50s or 60s until um, George Jeffrey, who we saw earlier, um, who I had a chat with, he had some on his stall. Now, what the Penrose Annual is, what it was, it was basically a celebration of new printing techniques throughout history, basically. So what they would do, the, 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 the books are literally full of like fold outs and, and things like this. And if you're a lover of nice books and books that are printed well Th believe me this is this is the the series to collect now because of their size they're incredibly heavy and i was when you find them online because you can find them on ebay and places like that but generally because of their weight they're about six pounds each to post in within the uk and they tend to go for about 20 pounds each um some are worth a lot more than others depending on what's actually in them um but what I'll do, I will do a uh, a bit more of a in-depth look at the Penrose Annual um, once I've got a couple of at least a couple of examples from each decade, I think. Um, but basically, what would happen is for literally for you know almost a hundred years, this ran. Uh, publishers would send in samples of their very very best printed work and it would then be bound up into this annual so it's almost like a, a printer's almanac you could say and uh, as you get to see all sorts of stuff in here there's certainly over the years penguin have been featured so which is one of the reasons i like it um you know because they were so on the, the cutting edge with their uh printing technology but you can see yes yeah, uh loads of great stuff in here you often find that because of the nature of this um with lots of these single sheets in that, that you, the copies have been um, pulled to bits uh, for prints, basically. So people literally do take them apart and mount the prints and stuff up inside, which I think is obviously blasphemy, but I can understand people doing it. If the book is tatty, for example, there's uh, Albatross books there. And you do often see stuff with like latest dust jacket innovations and things like that. They really are... Uh... Oh, that's great. In fact, look at that. Was that... I spot. So Gowan and the Green Knight, a prose translation. Wasn't that a Tolkien? This was pro probably prior to it, wasn't it? Golden Cockerel. Interesting. Well, there you go. So you get an idea anyway of what, what this is like. So I asked um, George how much he was charging for these, and it was £10 a book. So I thought, well, um, they are really hard to find in wrapper. This one's obviously got some dust wrapper rare, uh, wear, but I'll be able to clean that up all right. Basically, it's not a bad copy of a very scarce book. And then I picked up some more. So, I mean, I'm not going to go through them all, but this is the one for 52. They were all this person. They bought them brand new. And you can see what they're like. This is the one which looked at Festival of Britain stuff. So... Uh, there's quite a bit of Festival of Britain stuff in the 1952 one because it's like looking back at the year. So this was a really good one to get hold of, as you can imagine. 
and as I said, I've got them back to. I think the earliest one I've got is um, is nineteen twelve, I believe I have, and then I've got one for nineteen twenty. But as I said, once I've got there's some penguin there. Once I've got um, showing my favourite king penguin there, life and English. Once I've got a couple from each decade, I will do a dedicated video on them, so you can see just what they're like. This is the fifty four one. I managed to get six, if you can believe it. And uh, George was charging just £10 each for these, which was an absolute steal. And he gave me an incredible discount on them. So, George, if you're watching, thank you very, very much indeed. Um, this one's for 1957. This is fantastic. Really great condition for their age. And you can just see they weigh a ton. I'm not kidding. They weigh an absolute ton. Even my earlier ones are really, really heavy. This is the most the final one the most up-to-date one that i got which was for 1960 uh number 54 and uh, this one's nice because it's got like a glassine like a plastic coating on it anyway really really nice and you can see as time goes on so they went up to 1982 so as time goes on they're going to be um changing look at it just astonishing look at this and cabris this is that Look at that, Cadbury's Classics, how amazing. So you can see why this sort of stuff gets, gets taken out. So the Penrose Annual, absolutely incredible. If you like, you know, this sort of thing, old printing and things like that, it's uh, just amazing. It's astonishing, isn't it? Absolutely packed with stuff. So I think you'll, uh, You'll really enjoy getting your hands on some of those, if you like me and enjoy those. So there you go. That's my haul from the Bloomsbury Book Fair. And what a fun show it really, really was. Uh, thank you to Kim and George for being such great hosts and for inviting me up to film the fair. I really, really enjoyed myself and uh, looked like everybody else was having a great time as well. So thank you very much for that. If you're in the London area on one of these dates, you absolutely would be doing yourself a disservice by not popping in and uh, checking out because there's so much there and massive, massive bargains to be had. Certainly if I lived in London, I'd be there every single month without fail. And I know some people definitely are. Anyway, next time you'll see me, we'll be at the uh, Paperback and Pulp Fair on Sunday, November the 24th. So if you're going to that one, do make sure you stop me and say hello. Thank you very much for watching today. If you've not subscribed already, do please hit that button and I shall look forward to seeing you again very soon. Bye.